Welcome to the episode number three of the Red Talks. Uh, I'm thrilled to be hosting Darren Brady all the way from London. Hello, Darren. How's it Hi. going? Yeah, very well, thanks. Yeah. So heaven knows I met Darren uh, exactly when I needed him the most. It was 2018 and my father has just passed away and I was in a lot of emotional turmoil. And right about this, this time, I discovered uh, and got so interested in the work and books of Brene Brown. And uh, I discovered actually that there are workshops, uh, two-day workshops based on these, these books. And uh, this is when uh, Darren and Ade, his training buddy, uh, appeared and showed up in the Brussels arena. You remember these days, Darren? <laughs> yeah, I do, with, with great fondness. And it feels like 10 years ago. Exactly. This was pre-COVID when we could meet physically. And these are very special days. So, so uh, Brené's work, as some of you know, is all about showing up to our, our vulnerabilities, um, um, talking to our fears in a courageous yet gentle way, and, and basically about living the life we all have the right to. And I want to ask you at the beginning, how did you get into this work and how, how did you become a facilitator of these workshops, so now famous, daring greatly, rising strong, and and a few more. And what did it do for you? Yeah, great. I think the first thing I want to say is how did it happen? It happens. I like to use the word magic. Like you know how how you and I met. It wasn't like there was a strategy, you know, and it all happened very naturally. Meeting you, meeting Brené, and then going to Texas to do the training. It just came out of a passion and a purpose. So Adi and I had been working together. And again, even with meeting Ade, that was magical. And then we started to do work with gay men because what we recognized was there was a lot of stories which were untold. There was a lot underneath the surface of everything's okay now. You know, we've got yeah. kind of equality in the Western world and all that kind of stuff. But um, underneath the surface, there was all these untold, often traumatic stories. And so we were working with gay men and we were doing a lot of work around shame. Shame was the big theme that was coming up. And yeah, we scratched the surface and oh my God, there was so much there that needed to come out, to be shared, to be witnessed by benevolent witnesses, you know. And at the same time, Brené had been doing the work around shame and, you know, the, TED, the big TED talk, which was the breakthrough for her, which really focused on shame. And so we were naturally curious about this. And she had a big platform because remember going back a few years ago, no one, re shame was not really spoken about and um, it was still a taboo subject, but she somehow managed with the story she told to get the audience interested. So unbeknownst to me, Ade just um, emailed her and said, yeah. I believe you're coming to London, you're doing a book thing, could we meet you and could we talk to you about what we're doing? And uh, she said, yes, she said, yeah, I'll, I'll meet you. Oh my God, this, this is Brenny Brown inviting us, you know? And so um, she said, would you like to come to Texas? And we were just like giggly girls and you know, like, yeah, of course, yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, and afterwards we were like, did she, did she really just invite us? You know, it was, <laughs> it was one of those, again, completely spontaneous, things you hear about it you contact us and then we, we just almost magically in Brussels you know in your wonderful center doing the work and it was so simple everything was simple and what I learned from this is you know I, I spent a lot of time in my life str in struggling I thought struggle was the theme of my life and I started to recognize that was going to be hard if I was going to carry on with the struggle theme the rest of my life then you know that wasn't really the life I wanted because it's it takes its toll and so I, I decided to set a different intention for my life um, probably around 10 years ago which was ease ease not easy yeah. but ease you know to be at ease with myself and meeting you and Brené and the work and all the work we do uh, with mixed groups and with gay men Generally, all the magical stuff has been easy. It's just, it's just come and it happened. And uh, yeah, wonderful. Yeah, I can feel why, why you call it magic today from this perspective, because it was just unfolding for you. And, and, and you, it was not difficult anymore to, to, find the, to, to um, feel the purpose in this work, right? Yeah, absolutely. It was just natural 
everything was congruent, you know, uh, meeting Brené, she was just congruent. And we, we were being ourselves, she was being herself. When we met you guys in Brussels, we just came as we were, and so did you, and so did all the participants that did the program. And, you know, wonderful, wonderful experiences. I hope we get to repeat those again in the future, you know, when we're able to meet again, because, yeah, it was just magical, magical. Yeah. Yeah, we will. I'm, I'm, I'm 100% certain because this work is too important to be put away. And, and it's true, uh, Brene and all of you uh, facilitators and trainers, this is like, you leave us with amazing legacy, you know, and, and, and trust uh, that we can do this, this fire walk, as they call it. Um, I also know that you are um, deepening this, this path and, and also developing other little projects around um, authenticity, uh, speaking really truth and, and um, being in, in, in it fully. So I wanna um, take you now to another project of yours, which is called the Hush, the famous Hush events. Um, I was also lucky to be present at one of them. You and Ade created another event, uh, like an uh, open, of course, vulnerable, um, um, unscripted conversations that takes place between the two of you. Uh, what is interesting that this conversations touches topics which are often viewed as shameful or as taboo. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the th topics you've touched um, are grief and forgiveness, love and betrayal, and loneliness and belonging. And God knows this past year has been a lot of these. So um, I wanna ask you how it came to this and, and how was your experience with it? Uh, how, was your, how was the response? Uh, I know what I felt, my soul was touched and it definitely left a tremendous impact on me. Yeah, you know, the tagline that we have with Hush, Hush, we have this graphic of someone with their finger of their lip. And I don't know if you remember at school, but very often that was the way they got children to be quiet was put your finger on your lip, you know, be quiet. And it's, so the tagline is untold stories, courageous conversations, because at the heart of what we do is really sharing stories, sharing stories of challenge, sharing stories of shame, you know, being counterintuitive. As human beings, we learn to keep shame silent, you know, and then it grows. And so we do the opposite. And so in the programs that we did with you in Brussels and we do with Brené, um, it's really about creating a safe space for people to share stuff that has real impact for them, you know, often from the past. And so we thought, well, an extension of this is, is going on stage and talking about it from our own experience as well. Um, really role modeling that idea of speaking the unspeakable um, with benevolent witnesses, you know, um, our audiences are always wonderful and warm and receiving and, and have questions as well. So, and what happens I, I think in the programs and at Hush is it's a catharsis, not only for us as, as the speakers, but as the witnesses, as the people witnessing what we're saying. Because when I start telling my story, and I think you felt this Red Miller, it starts to resonate very deeply with, with other people's stories. Context, very different. You're a woman, I'm a man. But actually on a human level, we connect. And there's a catharsis because, wow, you know, here's this person talking about pain or loss or grief or shame or all those things. And people feel it themselves. So ultimately, it, the intention was, is healing. People want to let go of this stuff, but they've been carrying it often for years and often from childhood. So it's that's that was really the purpose of Hush, to create another channel for the storytelling sharing. Yes, yeah, it's incredible. I love the Hush events and, and looking forward to them returning live. And uh, as beautifully you said, I mean, it's, it's topics that we don't discuss or we did not have tools to, to face before in our lives. So that's why this work that, that you do is so important. Um, Alongside the importance of human connection is was how how did we deal with this crisis with the lack of social contact with with finding each other knowing how each other how how everybody's doing, and um, you again as creative as you are came up with uh, something more 
to my delight, um, I was on the receiving end. So you started uh, creating something you call the vocal blog. I think one of the one of the things connected to this is poetry. So before I did the vocal blogs, I found myself a couple of years ago beginning to write what felt like poems. And it really came out of some difficult challenges. A relationship had come to a close. So there was a lot of grief and loss at that time. And I found that by writing, and my writing found this lyrical form, it was very cathartic for me. It was a way of healing. It was a way of connecting to a deeper sense of myself. And so I'd, I'd started writing these poems and actually doing the same thing and then sharing them with people. And then with the vocal blogs, I just thought, what would it be like to just have an, one little idea in my head and just to switch record on my phone and just start talking? The communal aspect of it was really beautiful for me, but it was also that connecting with self uh, on a deeper level. You know, I've got this thing at the moment about the internal and the external. You know, the external world, if we're looking, if I'm looking out to the external world, there's a lot of uncertainty, there's um, a, a constriction, a kind of a shrinking of the external. And that can be very distressing um, because I'm a very external person. I love travel. I like to be out there, you know. And so what I've had to do is, is often remind myself to go inside, to find my own peace, to find my own calm and stability. Because out there, often it's not providing that for me. So I think poetry and the vocal blogs was me saying hello to myself on a deep level. And this is what I also felt like in a time of crisis um, and, and, and needing more, that we do have a possibility to turn to ourselves and, and you know, sometimes a creativity boost. Um, so I also started uh, writing uh, longer pieces, shorter pieces, poems. Um, in the last year and um, actually I wanted to invite you for a little play now uh, mm. which I call back to back uh, to share something that we've done that we've created in this period when my thoughts just aren't that good enough when they twist my anxious innards when they gnash my teeth become the thief of thinking that things matter I need some inspiration I need a helping hand I need a thought that lifts me from this familiar sinking sand. I need those shining speakers, lauded thinkers, pioneers. I need those who stood up to say, all is not what it appears. I need to pick up books, stream music to my ears. I need to stretch, look up, reach out to those who welcome my dilemma to lovingly remind me it will not last forever. I need to jump, run, turn around and spin in fervish manner to shake and wake the parts of me submerged in heavy matter. And even the mere thought that there is more to this here moment allows my heart to race again, my heart to find its grace again, my life to regain pace again, for me to feel I matter. From, from dark and dismal energy, I grasp for different input a prescription from a new book, an alternative to shatter. These boring, turgid thoughts that rumble in my head, that rather than enhance my life, do the opposite instead. And I find them in their multitudes, the visions, dreams and matter that offer me salvation of my going nowhere chatter. I love it. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, Thank let's you. go. I'm excited to hear your Yeah, thoughts. back to back. Okay, so I'll read the, the nature of godliness. Here it goes. There is nothing to say, yet there is so much to say. A whole world at hand, yet a view through a keyhole. An ocean of feelings, yet a barely dripping tap. Sometimes memories are ever present and they gift us with an invite to build more of such precious threads. They are reminders of the bridge we once built and that we are cap capable of sowing the same seed of godliness again. It is our nature and no one or anything can take that away from us. Yeah, I love the image of the keyhole, like the, the kind of closed focus. And the yeah, exactly, narrow looking. 
yeah, and the dripping tap and the smallness of things. And actually how much power and beauty there is in the small things, you know, as well. Um, yeah. It's gorgeous. I want to um, conclude with something that came up to my mind and to check with you. What do you think about it? So we, in our work, both yours and mine, we talk about um, a lot about being vulnerable and the importance of being vulnerable in order to, to create this human connection. Um, I also found out that for us to be creative, you know, to really use a creative force, it's the same thing. We have to be vulnerable because we are showing that creative side to the world. So we got to put it out there. And I wanted to ask you then, um, could it be that in the times of crisis or, or big tests and trials, um, we can become more resilient through, through unleashing that creativity within us? Um, how are they connected? Is, is, is the power of vulnerability, power of creativity? It's a very good question. I think for me, being creative is around, about tapping into, trusting there's something within me and tapping into that thing. If I don't trust, I won't allow, I won't allow myself to, su to surrender to the creative force. So within, I, I know my best, my most powerful, I should say, poems are when I surrender to, to what's within me and it just comes out. It's like, I'm just the conduit. I'm not really the creator. It just flows out. And yeah. so I have to trust that. And that's, there's a vulnerability in that. But I think for me, it, it is really critical at this time and even before when I was going through challenges to connect to myself on this very deep level. Creativity to me is, is a spiritual act. And, you know, we all have our little things, what we do, how, how to, to feel that trust. And, and for me, trust was a lot also about feeling safe and also mm -hmm. safe to create and put out something out there. And I constantly have to remind myself, you know, not to be uh, hard on myself or, or, you know, like being afraid of, uh, of judgment or anything. And, you know, some of the, the small things I do is like um, I wear this, this uh, sweater because it reminds me that I'm a human. Very enough. I have something very funny for the end. I yeah. thought of something. If you could have a wish that involves me, yeah. whether it's a reality or a fantasy, doesn't matter, what, it, what would it be? If I, if I could, I'd like to see Darren as a cameo, cameo appearance in the next season of Bridgerton. And <laughs> as, the, as, the, as, the Duke of, as the Duke of Soho, let's say. <laughs> oh wow! Oh, the Duke of Soho. I love that idea. This is my my vision for you. I want to be present at your book launch, which I know that you're in writing a book, and I want to be. I can see this really big book launch where you're reading from the book, and I'd just be in awe of you and one of your honored guests. And I'm imagining like 300 people in a room with you in the center of the room, uh, reading from your book and these piles of books. And yeah, yeah, I, I think that would be. Uh, oh my, my God. Wow, it's fabulous. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you for the opportunity. This has been a wonderful way to start my morning. So I really appreciate the opportunity. Redmond. Yes. Yay. Thank you everybody for watching us, for listening to Darren and me. Uh, chatting up our creative stuff um, looking forward to hearing more and doing more with Darren in the coming years and this has been the third episode of the Rat Talks see you soon <laughs>